So, uh, in this lecture I want to talk about something called Ethereum roll ups uh, which are a scaling technology for Ethereum. So, why do we need to scale Ethereum? So, each operation on Ethereum uh, costs some gas like we saw yesterday. So, the minimum transaction uh, gas cost is 21,000 gas and suppose you want to do uh, Ethereum transfer that also costs 21,000 gas. If you want to do a token transfer, so ERC20 is a token you can create on Ethereum. So, that costs 65,000 gas, uh, but the minimum is always 21k and the block gas limit in Ethereum is 30 million gas. Uh, so, Ethereum does not have a block size limit, it has a gas limit. It limits the total number of operations via the gas. So, if I just look at Ethereum transfers, so if I divide this 30 million by 21,000, each Ethereum block can accommodate about 1400 Ethereum transfers. And then Ethereum uh, interblock time in Ethereum is about 13 seconds, so that will work out to 109 Ethereum transfers per second. I, but in practice, if you look at the historical data, the uh, actual throughput, the number of transactions per second in Ethereum is actually only 15 transactions per second. So, that is very low if we want uh, Ethereum to support uh, very diverse applications. And what happens is that whenever there is a high demand for Ethereum block space, suppose there is an auction or there is maybe there is an NFT uh, which is being auctioned off, then uh, people compete for uh, compete in the auction and they want their transactions to get included in the block. So, they end up paying higher transaction fees because the transaction fees goes to the miner. So, the miner will always include transaction which will pay a higher fees to them. So, the transaction fees goes uh, high. So, how do we increase Ethereum's throughput? That is how do we increase the number of transactions which an Ethereum block can accommodate? So, there was a previous attempt uh, maybe 4 5 years ago, it was called plasma. Uh, the main idea is that uh, we will move the computation and the state off chain. So, what do I mean by computation? So, the if I have a computation which happens in an Ethereum transaction, then I have to pay gas which is included in which is accounted for in the Ethereum block. But suppose I have a separate blockchain, I will have another blockchain where I will do the computation and that separate blockchain will have also the state variables. So, this is called moving the state and computation off chain. You are having a separate blockchain where you do the computation, but what will be stored on Ethereum is only the state root. The state root is the Merkle root of the uh, world state. So, you have a separate blockchain, it has its own world state and you compute a Merkle root of all the state in that separate blockchain and you store that on Ethereum. Uh, this was uh, this attempt was called plasma, this uh, idea was called plasma, but the problem was that you needed to uh, trust the plasma operator. So, the person or the entity which is running that separate blockchain is called the operator of the of the plasma. So, if they have control over the, uh, the state and the computation and uh, if they withhold the data which is involved in the that separate blockchain, the plasma blockchain, then uh, users may not be able to withdraw their assets. So, the main the way the workflow would be is that uh, I want cheaper transaction fees, I cannot use main Ethereum. So, I will move my uh, assets for first from main Ethereum to the plasma blockchain, then I am at the mercy of the plasma operator to guarantee something called data availability. So, since the state of my assets once I move it to the plasma blockchain is in uh, is in the another blockchain that operator of that blockchain has to uh, make that data available. So, data availability is a problem. So, because of this uh, problem of data availability it was not solved people came up with various kinds of mechanisms to solve this data availability problem. What if the plasma operator disappears or if they stops operating their node? Uh, because there is no mining on the plasma blockchain. So, there is no incentive for people to run that pl plasma block blockchain or maintain that plasma blockchain. So, uh, there was uh, there was no clean solution to this problem. So, there was limited market adoption plasma never took off, but what did take off is something called a roll up. Uh, the idea of a roll up is that same as plasma we will move the computation and state off chain, but uh, the data which is going to be in the uh, roll up blockchain the second uh, blockchain that will be posted on Ethereum as something called call data. So, what is this call data? I will have an example in the next slide. So, ca call data is actually arguments to smart contract method calls. Uh, it is accessible in the current method call. So, if I call some function like mint the arguments are accessible in the current method call, but they are not accessible later to other method calls, but they can be read from the Ethereum logs. 
and uh, uh, it has call data is cheaper and that enables you to reduce the cost of storing the data uh, the state data on the ethereum blockchain so the main idea of rollups is that for data availability you will use the main ethereum blockchain but you will use it by you will uh, you will use the call data in the ethereum blockchain to uh, to ensure data availability uh, and then uh, what is stored on the main blockchain is again the state routes like plasma you will store the state route you will just store, store like a merkle hash some 32 bytes of the complete state which is stored on the rollup on the second blockchain but how do we know that the state route is correct because uh, if the if we move the computation and state off chain suppose i have some account balances which are to be stored uh, and then uh, i store only the root on the ethereum blockchain then how do i ensure that that root is correct so there are two mechanisms there are two types of rollups which are dif differ in the mechanism to ensure correctness of the state root uh, one mechanism is called a fault proof and the other mechanism is called validity proof uh, so we will see more of more about these two mechanisms in the subsequent slides the disadvantage of rollups is that the user experience is slightly degraded and what is the degradation certain operations take more time certain operations are as fast as uh, main ethereum but some operations will take more time i'll explain which of these operations uh, get delayed so let's look at this call data so what is this call data so in ethereum contracts there are three types of data locations uh, one is called storage where contract state variables are stored uh, then there is something called memory which persists only during the current method execution and then after that it is not accessible by any uh, contract uh, method and then there is third one is call data which are read only locations in the function arguments so here is an example uh, so this contract is called data locations so this uh, uh, array of unsigned integers called arr this is a storage array so this is the first type of data location so this is this will persist as long as this contract exists so this will persist this this array can be accessed in all the methods which are uh, called even later this second example this array here which is the argument to this function g that is a memory array so this memory array underscore r will be accessible only during this function call this is the second type of memory location and then this this uh, argument will not be accessible later if i call g again or if i call h it will not be accessible it is only accessible in the current method call so it is not a persistent memory it will disappear after the current method call completes after this function call completes then the third uh, uh, type of uh, location is call data if you see this h function this i am annotating this argument as call data so this is accessible only in the current uh, method call it can't be accessed in the later method calls but uh, one thing about this is that its cost is lower so what is the cost of the different types of data storage if i have to store a byte in this kind of uh, memory a storage array which is persists forever in the as long as the contract is uh, operational that costs about 690 gas per byte memory uh, it scales quadratically with the number of 32 byte words so as the number of by 32 byte words you store keeps increasing then it will scale quadratically so it becomes expensive once you have enough number of uh, bytes uh, words in the memory and then call data is uh, 16 gas per non zero byte and 4 gas per zero byte so if if you compare 690 gas to 16 bytes it's like almost like an order of magnitude lower so call data is much cheaper to store information but the disadvantage of call data is that call data cannot be accessed uh, after the method call is completed so this call data will be applicable will be available only during this method call but in later method calls it's not accessible but what does happen is whenever a method is called the the function call is recorded in something called the ethereum logs so every ethereum node will have this uh, call data array in its logs so uh, anybody who is running an ethereum node can recover this data so the idea of rollups is that let us store the uh, the state which is required which is the state root will be stored in storage so state root will be stored in an, some variable like this but the the pre image of that state root so what data needs to be hashed to get that state root that i will store in this call data because it is cheaper it's only 16 gas per non zero byte and uh, there are proposals which are being pro uh, in ethereum there is a proposal to re reduce the cost of this uh, call data even further and the main motivation is to enable rollups to scale even more so call data is much cheaper than storage uh, and contract methods can only access call data in the current call not past calls 
But uh, what the rollups will do is we'll store the essential state in storage that is like the state root and sometimes we'll store like account balances. But uh, the everything else which is needed to justify those account balances they will not be stored in storage they will be stored in call data. So, that is the uh, main idea and uh, so how popular are rollups? So, here is a screenshot from a website called uh, l2beat.com. It gives uh, a graph of the total value locked in ethereum layer 2. So, as I mentioned in the context of plasma before you can do transactions on layer 2 you have to move your layer 1 assets to layer 2. Layer 1 assets can be like a ether or it can be your ERC20 some tokens which you have created it can even be NFTs. Uh, so, you have to move your assets to layer 2 by doing a layer 1 transaction on ethereum and then after that then you can transact on layer 2 at a much cheaper cost. So, this graph is uh, showing the for the past uh, I, okay, the X, so from November 2019 to uh, December 2022 it is showing you the total value locked the y axis is in billions of dollars and uh, the current uh, on December 13th uh, 2022 the total value lock was 4.4 .4 billion dollars. So, it has fluctuated it has uh, uh, increased there was a spike and then it has fluctuated it is reduced from the peak that the peak it was close to uh, 7 billion dollars or close to 8 billion dollars and now it is at 4.4 .4 billion dollars. And if the here the, this is a list of roll up projects uh, which are uh, uh, and their corresponding total value lock TVL is a total value lock. So, here is uh, something called Arbitrum 1 that is quite that is the most popular roll up in terms of total value locked it has 2.33 billion dollars worth of assets in it. And if you notice the last column it under technology it is listed as something called an optimistic roll up. We will go into these de uh, details about what what is an optimistic roll up. And then the second one is also an optimistic roll up it is called optimism and uh, its total value locked is about 1.2 billion dollars. And the uh, third and fourth are listed as ZK rollups. ZK here stands for zero knowledge. So, ZK rollups uh, use something called zero knowledge proofs, which I'm ho I hope Mahanoj has introduced. They use zero knowledge proofs to ensure the validity of the state root which is stored in the main Ethereum main, uh, main chain. So, DYDX is a decentralized exchange, and Loopring is a, uh, it is a, uh, it is a rollup where which allows you to uh, do regular transactions payments and also token transfers and swaps. So, this is also a zk roll up and then there are some other uh, types of uh, technologies here this is something called an optimistic chain and a validium and this is zk sync is also a uh, zk roll up. So, zk roll ups are also called validity roll ups uh, because uh, they they give a validity proof of the state root which is stored on the uh, ethereum blockchain. But how cheap are uh, ethereum layer 2s. So, layer 2s are rollups are called layer 2s because ethereum is considered layer 1 and layer 2s are separate blockchains which have their own set of transactions and blocks, but uh, it is cheaper to use them. So, how cheap are they? Uh, so, here is a screenshot of uh, the fees on layer 2 which I took uh, yesterday. So, if you see the, uh, the last row it gives you the fee for sending ethereum on the ethereum main chain and for swapping tokens on ethereum main chain. So, these are types of transactions sending ethereum is just transfer ether to one from one address to the other and this uh, swap of tokens is that maybe I have uh, one kind of uh, token I want to swap it for another. So, that uh, the prices are like 41 cents and 2 dollars on main ethereum, but if you look at these uh, roll ups which are there. So, loop ring is for sending ethereum it costs only 1 cent which is like uh, 40 times cheaper than main net ethereum. Then there are some other examples like zk sync cost 3 cents, arbitrum 1 cost 3 cents, optimism cost 7 cents and so on. And swapping of tokens also is much cheaper than the 2 dollars here. So, the cheapest one is like zk sync which costs like 6 cents. So, this is the advantage of using rollups that uh, there is some initial setup required you have to first transfer your assets uh, from layer 1 to layer 2 and once you are on layer 2 uh, you can transfer between people on layer 2 at a much cheaper cost. So, let, let me give a classification of the types of roll ups which are there. Uh, so, first there are roll ups which use something called on chain data availability. So, DA stands for data availability and then there are some other technologies like plasma and there is also something called validium which is off chain data availability. On chain data availability means that all the data which is required to generate the state root that will be stored on the main ethereum chain as call data because call data is cheaper. And off chain is that uh, nothing is stored on the main ethereum chain 
it is all stored by some committee of uh, trusted uh, storage providers. It is called a data availability committee. So, Validium is a data availability committee, Validium has a data availability committee and Plasma has an operator who stores it. As long as you trust the operator, you can trust, as long as you trust them to provide data availability, you are, you are fine. So, under rollups, there are two types, application specific and general purpose. So, what is the difference? So, application specific rollups have limited functionality on layer 2. So, L2 stands for layer 2. Like you can say that uh, uh, they, there are examples of application specific rollups which only support transfers of Ethereum and ERC20 tokens. ERC20 token is a type of token you can create, you will be doing that in the lab today. But general purpose rollups support arbitrary smart contracts on layer 2. So, what can, what is an example of an arbitrary smart contract? Maybe you have a voting contract or you have an auction contract. So, that is an arbitrary smart contract that cannot be supported on an application specific rollup, it will be supported on a general purpose rollup. And within application specific rollup, there are uh, three types. One is uh, called an optimistic rollup, uh, validity rollup and hybrid which uses a combination of optimistic and validity rollups. So, optimistic rollups use something called fault proofs to uh, uh, decide the validity of the state root which is stored on Ethereum. Validity rollups use zero knowledge proofs, they are also called ZK rollups, but the community is, says we are not using the zero knowledge pro uh, property of rollups uh, of uh, zero knowledge property to ensure validity of the state roots. There is no privacy here, so that is why the name validity rollups is preferred. And hybrid is, it is a hybrid of optimistic and validity rollups. So, you will use uh, uh, zero knowledge proofs, but the cost of verifying a zero knowledge proof is high. So, you will not verify the zero knowledge proof unless you get a challenge from some user. So, examples of uh, optimistic rollups, application specific optimistic rollups are Fuel and Hubble uh, and uh, Fuel V1 because Fuel V2 version 2 hopes to be a general purpose rollup, uh, op general purpose optimistic rollup. Under validity rollups, uh, there are quite a few. There is uh, ZK Sync uh, 1.0, Polygon Hermes 1.0, Loopring, ZK dot money, and DYDX. DYDX is uh, runs on something called StarkX, which is a particular kind of uh, validity proof uh, technology. Then hybrid, there are a couple: Polygon Nightfall and uh, zk Opru. So zk Opru stands for uh, zk optimistic rollup. Uh, so that is why uh, it is zk Opru. It is an Ethereum Foundation project. I put a star there because it has not been launched. It is in the code is available online. It is open source, but it has not been launched. So that's why I put a star there. So, by the way, the reason rollups are called rollup is that uh, you roll up all the data which is required for some transactions and you put them in the call data. So, you roll them up in some sense, that is why it is called a rollup. The, the first uh, uh, proof of concept was uh, uh, the GitHub repository of that proof of concept had the name rollup, so the name just stuck. So, in the, under general purpose, again, you have this uh, combination optimistic rollup and validity rollup. And uh, there are uh, the two projects I showed in the screenshot, Arbitrum and Optimism. They are examples of optimistic rollups. And validity rollups are like Starknet, ZK, Tink, ZK Sync uh, 2.0, Polygon Hermes 2.0, and Scroll. Uh, general purpose validity rollups are also called ZK EVMs. EVM stands for Ethereum Virtual Machine. So, to just to because uh, the general purpose rollups will support installation of arbitrary smart contracts on layer 2. And the operations done in an arbitrary smart, smart contract has to be verified using zero knowledge proofs. So, that is why they are called ZK EVMs because the operations are on the Ethereum virtual machine. Uh, so, under uh, the off chain data availability, these guys uh, th they are not the focus of my the rest of my talk, but I will just list them. So, there again you have application specific and general purpose, they are fault proof based or validity proof based. And uh, uh, there is some OMG network and Gluon, both of them are plasma. So, there are still some uh, scaling solutions for Ethereum which use off chain data availability, but uh, the total value locked is not very high. Uh, they are not very popular, I would say. The uh, among the application specific rollups uh, uh, which are based on validity proofs, these three are quite uh, popular. Immutable X is an NFT platform, NFT stands for non fungible token. So, you can create uh, non non NFTs on uh, Ethereum using ImmutableX, which are much cheaper than creating NFTs using the main Ethereum network. Uh, 
Diversify, I think, is a decentralized exchange, or a, I'm not, I don't remember exactly. I think it's a derivatives platform, and SoRare is also a NFT trading platform. So SoRare has a lot of sports NFTs on it. So these are quite popular. The among uh, among these uh, among the techno among the rollups or the, these are not rollups. These are technologies which use off-chain data availability. So these uh, these three they use a data availability committee. So the data is not posted on Ethereum mainnet. It's not posted on call data. It is just uh, maintained by a trusted committee of data availability providers, and they sign off saying that we have we have stored the data which is being for uh, whose state root is being stored on main Ethereum network. Then general purpose there is uh, something called Matrix Andromeda, and uh, uh, there is no general purpose validity proof uh, roll up with off chain data availability. So uh, the main roll up co uh, components are the following. So there is a L1 user wallet. It is like your MetaMask, which I showed in, uh, which is there in your Firefox or your any browser plugin. Then there is a smart contract which is installed on Ethereum called the bridge contract. Uh, then there is the entity who is a roll-up operator. This is an entity who will be helping the coordination, all the different parts. The coordination he involves communication between the layer two chain and the layer one chain. And then there is a layer two user wallet. So the uh, the roll-up operator is also called a sequencer or a validator. And what the uh, the roll-up operator will do is they will expose a RPC endpoint. RPC stands for remote procedure call. So they will have some URL and the port number, and they will say that if you want to do transactions on layer two, please send me the transactions at this uh, RPC endpoint. So there is no uh, currently, most of the rollups uh, they don't have a peer-to-peer -peer network. So in main Ethereum, if you send a transaction, if you want to send a transaction, you will send it to the peer-to-peer -peer network, and then it will be propagated across the network. But in a rollup, there is a central authority who will uh, take your layer two transactions. Uh, and then uh, what this uh, operator will do is uh, they will uh, they will uh, receive transactions from two places. So one is from the bridge contract. So when the L1 users, when users want to transfer their assets to layer two, they will deposit it into the bridge contract. So the rollup operator will read those kinds of deposit transactions, and they will also read the layer two transactions which are sent to them from layer two users, and then they will create layer two blocks. Uh, so yeah, so this is the L1 deposit. So the rollup operator always monitors the bridge contract for. Uh, layer 1 deposit. So I have Ethereum on layer 1 on Ethereum. I want to transfer to layer 2. I have to do a deposit first. And then uh, so the rollup operator continuously or periodically monitors the bridge contract which is installed on Ethereum and it will whatever deposits it receives it will transfer those assets to layer 2. And how does it transfer? It will mint those assets on in, in a mint transaction on layer 2. And the bridge contract is just a solidity smart contract. Uh, for coordinating asset movement between layer 1 and layer 2. So why do we need some coordination? We will mainly to uh, ensure that the state routes are correct because layer 2 is a separate blockchain. Uh, some hash of the layer 2 state will be stored on the bridge contract. Now the, if, the, if there is a malicious rollup operator or there is some uh, state route which is faulty, then the bridge contract has to somehow uh, ensure that that faulty state route is rejected. So that coordination is done by the bridge contract. And the bridge contract also receives these layer two blocks and stores them as call data. So it not only receives the state routes, which is the hash of the total layer two state, but it also stores the layer two blocks as call data. And uh, it facilitates verification. So there are two kinds of verification for state routes, a fault proof and a validity proof. A validity proof is nothing but a zero knowledge proof. So this, the bridge contract will have a, a verifier operation, which verifies the zero knowledge proof in the smart contract itself. And fault proof involves uh, a game between a challenger and a verifier. So I have some uh, slides on that, what that fault proof is. Okay. So what is the layer 2 state? Uh, okay. So this one, uh, okay, should I, maybe I will show you an example in the case of uh, optimism. Let me switch to my Firefox. So this is the optimism.io, this is the optimism's uh, website. So here if I go to bridge, it says, uh, okay, connect your, uh, so this is, uh, there is a deposit uh, dialog which shows up. I have connected it to my uh, MetaMask already. So my address is showing up here. And it says uh, deposit, uh, it is asking for a deposit. 
and my current balance is about 1.09 ETH, it is 1.09 girly ETH. So, it is saying you deposit some amount, I can enter some amount and I can uh, deposit, I can and it says time to transfer is 20 minutes. So, what is this deposit? So, what is happening is that this is my, uh, uh, this is the layer 1 test net. Uh, in real life it would be, I would be on Ethereum mainnet, but here in this I am on Gurley which is the layer 1 test net. I am going to deposit some amount from my layer 1 test net to the optimism, the layer 2 test net, optimism Gurley. So, let us say deposit, then it says okay, this is the amount and this is the fees. Uh, in a current price 0 0.1 ETH is about 128 dollars and it says time to transfer is uh, uh, 20 minutes. So, if I click deposit then it will ask me to confirm on MetaMask, then I confirm it, then it will take a bit of time. So, it says deposit on route to optimism. So, what is happening in this is that I have layer 1 assets uh, and I am going to transfer it to my layer 2 and once I am on layer 2 then I can do transactions on layer 2. So, uh, I will not wait for this because it will take 20 minutes, but I have already done a transaction earlier uh, earlier today. So, let us look at with deposits. So, at uh, 943 I had done a deposit of 0 0.1 ETH. So, let me look at the, the transaction. So, here is the transaction which was done about 1 hour 49 minutes ago. So, what has happened? The value of the transaction is 0.1 ETH. So, the amount of Ether which was sent to uh, some contract. So, what has happened in this transaction is that 0.1 ETH has gone into this contract. So, let us see what this contract is. Before we go there, let us see what actually was this transaction. So, this transaction called a function called deposit <coughs> ETH. If you see this function here, it calls uh, and uh, it has two arguments uh, L2 gas, how much gas to uh, specify, and the data, some data. But I think those are all 0 here. They are not. Uh, the data is 0, but the L2 gas may be some value here. So, that the uh, optimism bridge took care of these values uh, and uh, where is the point 0.1 specified? So, the that is specified implicitly. When you send a transaction, if, I, if you remember yesterday there was a value field in the transaction. So, the value field will specify how much Ethereum is being transferred along with the transaction. So, that is specified in this. So, it does not need to specify in the function call. So, it went to some contract. So, what is this contract? Let us look at that contract. So, this is uh, some contract which has received uh, many deposit ETH transactions. If you notice the balance of this contract is 45,712 Ether. That is uh, quite a lot of money. Uh, each ETH, one Ether costs about I think $1,200, $1,200 right now. So, it is uh, quite a lot of money. So, what is happening is this is the bridge contract. So, when I deposit assets to my uh, layer 2, the bridge contract will hold my assets. So, 0 0.1 ETH was sent to the bridge contract, it will hold it. Then later I may do some transactions on layer 2. Then my, my 0.1 ether which is in layer 2, some of it will get spent in transactions on layer 2. Then later when I withdraw, then I have to withdraw the amount from the bridge contract. If I want to withdraw my assets from layer 2 back to layer 1, then the bridge contract will check how much money I have remaining in layer 2 and it will allow me to take that, uh, that amount of uh, ether back onto my layer 1 address. So, this is the uh, the workflow or this is like the bridge contract uh, and so on. So, let us look at uh, the contract uh, itself. Um, so, this is the contract code is not important, but let us look at. Uh, so, if you want to read this uh, contract, these are the variables which you can read and then if I want to write into the contract, then it has a bunch of functions. It has deposit ETH which we used, uh, it has uh, donate ETH, it has uh, deposit ERC20, then it has finalize ERC20 withdrawal, finalize ETH withdrawal and so on. So, it allows you to deposit Ether, and deposit uh, ERC20 tokens and also withdraw them at a later stage. So, let me switch back to my slides. So, any questions about this uh, so far? So, what is in the layer 2 state? So, we said that the layer 2 state, the state root is the as a hash of the layer 2 state. So, it depends uh, uh, on the type of uh, roll up also. So, a uh, roll up is a separate blockchain, it is a layer 2 blockchain, it maintains a blockchain of L2 transactions. Uh, I can actually uh, show that uh, L2 transactions also, let me for optimism's case, let me show that. So, let us go to optimism again, and if you go uh, at the very end there is a block explorer. 
to make this bigger. So, this is uh, optimistic dot ithescan.io that is optimisms block explorer. Then there are a bunch of uh, blocks happening here. Let us click on a block, it was 1 minute 30 seconds ago. Uh, and then uh, it specifies it says that the batch size is 144 transactions and also gives a L1 transaction hash. So, what is the L1 transaction is if I click on that it will open uh, etherscan.io transaction. So, optimistic dot etherscan.io is the layer 2 block explorer, it shows you blocks from it, the optimism la the layer 2 blockchain, but the transaction hash on ethereum scan etherscan.io it is a layer 1 transaction. So, what is this transaction? Let me make this a little bigger, it is too small. So, this was uh, let us see what this transaction is, we look at the method call. So, it says uh, if you see this, it says append sequencer batch. So, sequencer is another word for the roll up operator, it is also called a validator. So, this is adding the layer 2 blocks as call data. So, if you see this uh, the amount of uh, data which is being added is quite large. So, the call data which is the data corresponding to all those 144 transactions uh, th that is being sent as call data. So, append sequencer batch will have this call data here. If you see that the append sequencer batch has no argument, so the data can be sent as uh, message dot data. So, transaction if you remember the transaction fields in ethereum there was init slash data was one of the fields that has the data which you can send to a transaction. So, the call data is sent in that field. So, the append sequencer batch itself does not need to have an argument for that. Okay. So, on layer 2 there is a blockchain and the rollup operator maintains that uh, blockchain. Most rollups right now have a single operator. So, there is a single point of failure, but we will see how that can be mitigated all the risks of having a single operator. It comes with some risk because the operator may shut shop, they may uh, may not be malicious, but may, maybe they are not able to maintain the uh, maintain operations because their uh, revenues are not enough. So, they may close down because of economic reasons. So, roll up operators may disappear. So, but and the roll up operator is the only one who is maintaining the blockchain. So, we need some mechanisms to uh, mitigate that uh, risk. So, in general purpose let first let us look at the layer 2 state before we go to the mitigation uh, mechanisms. So, general purpose rollups again to remind you you can uh, you can uh, install arbitrary smart contracts on the layer 2. So, the layer 2 st uh, state will include the set of all layer 2 accounts and their token balances and set of all accounts uh, set of all contracts installed on layer 2 and their code and storage. So, it is like a separate uh, blockchain. So, if it is a EVM based blockchain then it will have a copy of uh, it is a, a version of the ethereum virtual machine there. So, it will it will have all kinds of contracts and code and storage and so on. And the L2 state root in this case is the hash of the entire L2 state. So, the world state try if you look at the root hash of the world state try on layer 2 that is the layer 2 L2 state root. So, in optimism uh, what optimism has done is they have, they have taken the uh, uh, they have taken a get get is a go uh, implementation of ethereum client software uh, it is called get because it is based on go they modified it a little bit and they said that we will maintain our L2 state using a modified version <coughs> of get. And the reason it is modified is because uh, it does not it is consensus uh, mechan mechanism is different from the main ethereum. Get runs on main ethereum, its consensus mechanism is no proof of stake, but on optimism there is no proof of stake uh, mechanism. There is a single operator and that single operator will just keep producing blocks. There is no need for consensus because there is a single block producer. So, they maintain a different a modified version of get. So, basically they remove the proof of stake part out of, out of it and the L2 state root will be the root hash of the world state try. In application specific rollups, the L2 state root or the layer 2 state which is much simpler, it does not have any contracts. So, general purpose uh, rollups have contracts, but uh, application specific rollups this they support a very narrow use, narrow set of use cases like transfers and NFTs. It only needs to uh, express the application state. So, suppose I have an application which supports token transfers, then uh, if the application is account based and a Merkle tree of account balances is sufficient if it is uh, and the L2 state root will just be the root hash of that Merkle tree. If uh, the examples are like zk sync 1.0 and Hermes uh, polygon Hermes 1.0. So, these uh, rollups they only support uh, uh, transfer of tokens, zk sync 1.0 also supports NFTs, 
but Hermes 1.0 is only transfer of tokens. Then the root hash is just uh, the L2 state root is just a root hash of a Merkle tree. But if the application is UTXO based, so UTXO stands for unspent transaction output, uh, then the application state is a set of all UTXOs, like it is like a Bitcoin kind of uh, roll up. And but the set of all roots L2 blocks, set of all L2 blocks is needed to determine the state, then the tip of the chain is the uh, L2 state root, the hash of the latest L2 block header will be the L2 state root. So, example is fuel V1. Uh, so, when, but in general, uh, the, uh, the community is moving towards general purpose rollups because the main reason is that I can have an application, application specific rollup, but then there is a problem of interacting with other smart contracts. If there are no other smart contracts on my rollup, then if I want to suppose if I have some tokens on uh, uh, application specific rollups and then I want to send that token to a contract, but an application specific rollups there will not be any contracts. So, that is why general purpose rollups are becoming more popular. So, let us look at a particular uh, L2 state in an application specific rollup. I said ZK sync 1.0 is a application specific rollup and its L2 state is a Merkle tree. So, what kind of Merkle tree is it? So, the Merkle tree is it is called a sparse Merkle tree uh, with account state hashes which are leaves and the account state ha has some fields. Uh, let me come back to this. So, it looks like this. So, the state root is uh, uh, a sparse Merkle tree. A sparse Merkle tree is a Merkle tree in which all uh, uh, it is not like at all uh, indices there will not be a leaf. Some of the leaves will be empty. So, you will use an index to go to a leaf. If the index exists you will get a leaf, but some of the indices may lead to a null value. So, that is why it is called a sparse Merkle tree. And uh, the state root here corresponds to the hash of uh, a root hash of uh, a sparse Merkle tree where at each of the leaves you have a hash of an account, hash of account 0, hash of account 1, hash of account 3 and so on. And then what is this hash of account uh, 0? It is a hash of these 4 fields. So, each account itself will have a balance tree which is another sparse Merkle tree which will have a balance of token 0, token 1. Typically token 0 will be Ethereum, then token 1 can be some popular ERC20 token. So, this is called a balance tree. So, you take the root hash of this balance tree and then you hash it with the nonce value and Ethereum address associated with the account and some other information. It is called a rescue hash of an L2 public key. I will come back to this later. So, the hash of the accounts is stored in the leaves of this uh, sparse Merkle tree. The hash, the account itself has a balance root which has a, which is, which corresponds to a, a sparse Merkle tree which holds account balances of that particular account. So, this is an L2 state of an application specific uh, rule up. I am not showing the NFT part here uh, in the interest of time. So, how do you verify state updates? So, I said that roll ups they do not store the whole state on layer 1, they only store a hash a layer 2, uh, a hash of a, uh, the layer L2 state root only store like a 32 byte hash. So, how do you ensure that the roll up operator is actually putting correct state roots? What if they are malicious and they put some junk there? So, validity rollups they use uh, zero knowledge proofs to prove correctness of the layer 2 state updates. And uh, Ethereum currently supports uh, zero knowledge proofs based on uh, technologies called uh, SNARKs and STARKs. SNARKs stands for succinct non interactive arguments of knowledge, and uh, STARKs is instead of N, instead of non interactive, you have T is for transparent. STARKs are also non interactive, but they are succinct transparent arguments of knowledge. So, what is it, what does transparent mean? So, the SNARKs have involved something called a trusted setup. So, uh, people have to generate uh, 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 some cryptographic uh, information before they can generate these kind of proofs, SNARK proofs. But STARKs have no such trusted setup because they do not have a trusted setup, they are called transparent. So, the transparent uh, indicates that there is no trusted setup involved in STARKs. But what is being proved? So, uh, recall the state root I showed in the previous slide. So, let us say you have some accounts, they have some balances, the balance roots are stored in these uh, accounts here. Suppose you have a current root R current and then uh, some transactions happen on layer 2 and you have a new root um, R new. Now, this uh, from R current to R new what this validity rollups will do is they will give a, a zero knowledge proof or a validity proof which proves that uh, the transi transition from R current to R new is correct. 
So what uh, what in what is involved what is the input to this proof generation process? So maybe account zero signed a transaction which transferred for some tokens from to account one. So account zero did some transfer to account one. So when that transfer happens on layer two, account zero will give a signature. Now what the the snark proof will do is it'll prove that I know a signature uh, which was signed by the owner of account zero and uh, the transaction which that owner signed has approved a, a transfer to account 1. So, the signature will be the input to the proof generation process, but the proof will prove the statement that the, the root transition from R current to R new is valid, but the input to the proof generation itself will be a bunch of signatures which are signed by the owners of these respective accounts. So, the proof pi will prove the correctness of the state root transition and this proof will be generated off chain. So, before that so, this uh, the new root corresponds to the state after executing a block of transactions. So, this proof will not be for every transaction, it will be for a block of transactions. So, the proofs are generated off chain. So, this proof generation process typically is quite compute intensive. Uh, so, there is uh, people are using uh, GPUs or FPGAs and there is some efforts to make ASICs for this proof generation process because currently most of the proof generation happens on uh, cloud on the cloud on AWS servers and costs a lot of money. Uh, and uh, But they are generated off chain, they are not generated on in any smart contract or anything, they are generated off chain and they are sent to a bridge contract and the bridge contract will have a proof verification. The great thing about uh, SNARKs and STARKs is that uh, if they are asymmetric in terms of the proof generation versus proof verification. The verification process is much much simpler and costs much less gas than the proof generation process. Uh, so, it is done on chain and the bridge contract needs to have a verifier method to verify this proof. So, this is how state updates happen on uh, validity, validity rollups. Any questions about this part? <coughs> 